Good morning, let's stand together. What a beautiful day to come and celebrate our freedom in Christ as we prepare to celebrate our freedom as a nation and as a people coming up later this week. And so we're so glad you're joining us. And, uh, and earlier this week, I was uh, realizing as the uh, heat was on that summer is here. So, uh, <laughs> and uh, also just uh, to let you know where we're at in the year, uh, tomorrow begins the second half of this year. So sad. Oh my goodness, this year is flying by so quickly. So that's another reason we just need to be always be prayerful. Lord, guide us by your spirit. Lord, lead us in your way. And make that our daily prayer. And even as we've been talking about in Sunday school, Lord, is there someone you want me to talk to today? Lead me to that person. And let me be able to share the joy of life, the joy of living in Christ. And so look for those opportunities. And so you've got six months left of 2024, hallelujah. Can you even believe that? That's just so hard to imagine. The days are flying by so quickly. And so let's make them count for the kingdom as we live for the Lord in joy and in life. I love this scripture that I have for today. It's Zechariah 14, verse 9. It says, God will be king over all the earth, one God and only one. What a day that will be. Hallelujah. What a day that will be. We're looking forward to that day. In the meantime, we're continuing to celebrate it and glorify the name of the Lord and the freedom that we have in Christ Jesus. So let's celebrate today by lifting our voice in praise and in worship. Hallelujah.
nothing that can stop our God. There is nothing. There is nothing. There's nothing that can stop our God. There's nothing that can stop our God. There's nothing that can stop our God. There is nothing. There is nothing. Breaker of chains. Jesus has triumphed over the grave. Sing hallelujah. The battle is won. Nothing can stand against our God. Sing hallelujah. The battle is won. Nothing can stand against our God. Come on, how many know the battle's been won today? Shout unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many know we can declare today, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord? Come on, how many know the battle's been won today? Come on, can you shout to the Lord like the battle's been won? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that we can stand today victorious because the battle has been won. Hallelujah. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to be with God's people. That's you. Everybody, let me see all God's people shout amen. amen. All right, we got some God's people in the house. Why don't you take a moment? Good having those of you join us today. And why don't you just turn around, greet somebody, say, hey, it's good to see you today in the house of the Lord.
your prayer to the Lord. Make your prayer. I have made a place for you by me, a place for you to come, a place for you to heal, a place for your cleansing, a place for power in your life, a place for direction and appointments, a place for understanding, a place for peace where all is settled, even if it's rough, it's settled in me. A place of great confidence where you can go forth and shine because of faith. Oh, I will increase your faith. Come to me, my people. I have great things for you you've not yet seen. They will bring glory to the kingdom. They will bring honor unto me. They will cause people to know me. Come, I've made a place for you. It is a place where I restore your soul. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's just receive that word. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you for this reminder. You make a place for us, that secret place to meet us, to restore us, to heal us, Lord. Help us to take advantage and to enter into that place of communion with you daily. Oh, Lord, daily, that every hour, Lord, we need you more than ever before. We thank you, Lord, for your, your word of encouragement, Lord, your, your rhema word of direction, Lord, drawing us to you, drawing us to the heart of Jesus. Lord, we love and praise you today. We worship and adore you. We thank you, Lord, for your words. Oh, draw us near. Help us to see you more clearly in this hour. Lord, to gain greater revelation in your presence, oh Lord. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. We love you. Hallelujah. We love to worship you together in the sanctuary. Oh, with the brethren, hallelujah, Lord, we love you today. We thank you that you still speak to us. Oh, hallelujah. You speak to us by your spirit. You speak to us words of revelation and encouragement. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. You, you speak to us by your word, and it all comes together. Your word says we're seated together with Christ in heavenly places. Oh, take us there, Lord. Take us to that place of revelation for this hour, for this time that we are alive and living in and help us to realize the importance of the hour, the importance of the moment. And Lord, that we need you more. We need your revelation. We need your communion more, hallelujah, than ever before. And we thank you, Lord, for your invitation. Oh, that you call every one of us to come up higher to come up higher, come up to a, a greater place, Lord, a place with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That place in your presence where there's fullness of joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Life evermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fill us with that life and that revelation. Oh, Lord, in those times with you, fill us with your fresh anointing 
your favor and blessing, oh Lord, that even when we come out of that, we'll be like Moses, that the glory of God will be upon us. It'll be upon our life, oh Lord, to make us a revelation to the world around us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord, we hear you today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise your name. Praise your name. Praise your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Amen. Well, what a revelation. What a revelation and encouragement and invitation from the Lord. We'd, we'd heard a quote this week. I think they said that it was from Billy Graham that later in his life that he was saying he wasn't wishing that he had had more great crusades or another great meeting. He wished that he had spent more time with, with the Lord. Amen. And so we're all invited to that secret place where we can gain the power that we need, the strength, the healing, the anointing, and the fresh revelation, hallelujah, that we need for this hour to be alive and involved in kingdom work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, you may be seated. We have a special presentation. This started with an idea. Somehow, if we were given the opportunity, we could become more. If given the place and the time, we could build a nation where everyone could become more. We prayed for favor. We believed that out of many, we could become one. Though America was never simple, our nation did not give in or give up. We crawled, strived for dreams and freedoms we believed in, fought to hold hands as we learned to stand on our own. We are brothers and sisters. Our dreams are not dimmed by our tears. We have stumbled, but will not fall. It began with the idea that beliefs should not be dictated. Freedom was to be shared. Worship was the right of the individual, not the responsibility of the government. All of these things were self-evident. We knew it in our hearts. They were inalienable for everyone, endowed by our Creator, God-given. On this day, we remember our freedom, and we thank the God who provided it. May God bless America. Amen, amen. Come on, can we stand together this morning and let's just give thanks unto God for the freedom we have in this nation and the freedom we have in Jesus Christ. Come on, let's give him all praise for that today. Lord, we thank you, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Blessed be the Lord, blessed be the Lord. Hallelujah. Could you somebody bring up the lights back there, please? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you all praise, God. We give you all praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be the Lord. Amen. Take your Bibles and turn with me this morning to Psalm 33. Psalm 33. I'd like to read just a couple of verses just out of the Amplified. Psalm 33, and, and I want to read just a couple of verses, uh, verses 11 and 12, or 12 and 13, actually. It says, blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen as his heritage. The Lord looks from heaven. He beholds all the sons of men. My message this morning is returning to the covenants of God. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, today for your word. God, again, may they be words of spirit, words of life. God, and we thank you today for the freedom we have to gather here today in the house of the Lord. Thank you for the freedom in this nation. 
And we thank you today for the freedom we have through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so today, God, may we be hearers of the word, Lord, so that we'll not just be do, Lord, does not be hearers, but be doers of the word, doing those things, God, that you've called us to do, to be that people of God that you've called us to be. And we just give you all thanks for that in Christ's name. And everyone said, amen, amen. and amen. You can be seated this morning. Returning to the covenants of God. This Thursday on the 4th of July, we are celebrating our nation's 248th birthday. 248 years ago, this nation was born. It was a nation based on liberty and responsibility. The covenants of God and the freedom to become what God intended us to become. The celebration of our nation's birthday is really a celebration of freedom. We have this freedom because others were willing to give their all. You see, we must remember that freedom isn't free. Freedom is very expensive this morning. It has cost some people everything, including their own lives. Freedom isn't free, but it's something worth fighting for. How many believe that today? Amen. What are we really celebrating this week? The truth of the matter is, we were founded, this nation on Judeo-Christian ethics found throughout the Word of God. We are a God-based nation from our very roots. And it's safe to say that the Christian faith was involved in just about every aspect of our nation's beginnings. You know, a lot of, in schools today, many are trying to rewrite history. They're trying to, uh, they're, they're revisionists, trying to re, reinvent history. But when we really know what, what happened in the beginning of this nation, we understand that's true. We were a, a Christian-based nation and Christianity was involved in every aspect of our nation's beginnings. Christopher Columbus in 1504, he wrote this reason for setting forth to discover a new land. And this was his reason. I quote, I was led by the Holy Spirit to carry the message of the gospel to undiscovered lands. End of quote. The pilgrims came here to Plymouth Rock on the Mayflower. And as they landed, they formed what is called the Mayflower Compact of 1620. And these are the words of the Mayflower Compact. And I quote, in the name of God, amen, having undertaken for the glory of God and for the advancement of the Christian faith, do we solemnly and mutually in the presence of God covenant and combine ourselves together. End of quote. The Puritans realizing that they could not worship God the way they wanted to there in England, decided to come to America for the purpose of showing how a nation could prosper if living under the laws of God. You know, as our nation began to take shape, the oaths of the founders is clearly seen in the documents that were drafted as each state organized itself. You had the Delaware Charter define the purpose of their colony. I quote, to further spread the holy gospel, end of quote. George Washington's personal prayer book said these words, and I quote, O eternal and everlasting God, direct my thoughts, words, and work. Wash away my sins in the immaculate blood of the Lamb and purge my heart by the Holy Spirit. Daily, frame me more and more in the likeness of thy Son, Jesus Christ, that living in thy fear and dying in thy favor, I may in thy appointed time obtain the resurrection of the justified unto eternal life. Bless, O Lord, the whole race of mankind, and let the world be filled with the knowledge of thy Son, Jesus Christ. End of quote. John Quincy Adams 
who would become the sixth president, said later in 1821 about the Declaration of Independence. He said, and I quote, from the time of the Declaration of Independence, the American people were bound by the laws of God and the laws of the gospel of Jesus Christ, which they all acknowledge as the root of their conduct. We all came together to obey the word of God, end of quote. He was also the chairman of the American Bible Society. Patrick, Patrick Henry said, and I quote, it cannot be emphasized too strongly or too often that this great nation was founded not on religionists, but by Christians, not on religion, but on the gospel of Jesus Christ, end of quote. In 1782, the United States Congress voted this resolution, and I quote, the Congress of the United States recommends and approves the Holy Bible for use in all schools, end of quote. How many believe we need that one back today? Amen. Do you know where the framers of our nation got the idea of three branches of government? Remember today that we have an executive branch, we have a legislative branch, and we have a judicial branch. Isaiah 33, 22, for the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king, it is he who will save us. Isaiah 33, 22, you see it refers to God in those same three aspects as our government. For the Lord is our judge, that's judicial. The Lord is our lawgiver, that's the legislative. And the Lord is our king, that's the executive. It is he who will save us. And when the framers of our government got together, they said, and I quote, how can we best organize our government? End of quote. They looked to the word of God for the wisdom they needed for his righteousness. Again, how many believe we need to get back there today? Now, this is going to blow your mind, and maybe you know this. The only reason I do is because of my study of revival and realizing where it came from. But do you realize that Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Dartmouth, William and Mary, and Columbia were founded by Christian preachers and church affiliations with the expressed intent to educate youth for Christ? Can you imagine that? We've seen a sort of a, a different purpose in Harvard and Yale and Columbia. Come on, haven't we? And William and Mary colleges. We've seen it, what's going on and what's happened, where it's gone to, haven't we? But they were colleges that were birthed for the reason of training men and women in the gospel of Jesus Christ. John Harvard. Where do you think Harvard got its name? John Harvard. He was a pastor in Charleston, Massachusetts. And the man, again, for whom Harvard University was named, stated that the purpose of the university, now listen to this, I quote, that every student be plainly instructed and earnestly pressed to consider well the main ends of his life and studies, to know God and Jesus Christ, which is eternal life, and therefore, to lay Christ in the bottom as the foundation of all knowledge and learning and to see that the Lord only giveth wisdom to let everyone seriously set himself by prayer in secret to seek Jesus Christ as Lord and Master. End of quote. Can you imagine that? Does that tell you how, how far that this nation is gone in a matter of years? Even Harvard's original seal, which can be seen on the campus today, it says these words, truth for Christ and the church. Do you know America's first school book was the New England Primer? I had a copy and I was looking, I have it somewhere. The New England Primer, that was the school book. It has the Lord's Prayer on the cover. It taught the alphabet 
in theological verse. A, in Adam's fall, we sinned all. B, it's heaven to find the Bible's mind. C, Christ crucified for sinners died. Now, as we sit here today, as we sit here today, four days before the celebration of this nation's 248th birthday, the question going forward that must be answered is this. What is the hope for America? What is the hope for America? And that's right. It is imperative for this nation to return back to the covenants of God like our founding fathers. Hallelujah. Proverbs 14, 34, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach. Sin is a disgrace to any nation, any people. Psalm 33, 12, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he chose for his inheritance. Come on, how many know today that we serve a real God? We serve the true God, hallelujah. Not some made up imagination by somebody. How many know there is a God in Israel today? Because his laws are just and good, and who always tend to promote the public welfare and prosperity. And God, we will bless this nation. And God will bless this nation as we follow him and stand behind Israel. Come on. How many believe that's more important than ever today? Yeah. That we stand before and with Israel and the influence of our faith in him will in every aspect of the culture promote virtue, intelligence, purity, and truth over a land, and thus will promote the welfare of this nation. Hallelujah. Well, how can we do this? Paul said it just a few moments ago. That's, that's always something to me, how the Holy Spirit is always weaving things together. And always, he, I don't know about you, because I knew what I was speaking about, you didn't. But I heard in what he said, God saying, you're right on track. What did he say a few moments ago? I know he said a lot of things. What did he say? He said, we've got to know the time that we're in. We've got to know, like Issachar, we need to understand the times we're in. We need to know what to do. Come on, first of all, today, we need to understand the present time. Are you hearing that word? The hour has come for the church to wake up from their slumber. Amen. Romans 13, 11, besides this, you know what a critical hour this is. How it is high time now for you to awake up out of your sleep to arouse to reality for salvation, final deliverance is nearer to us now than when we first believed, adhered to, trusted in, and relied on Christ, the Messiah. Beloved, I'm afraid the church has been sleeping. And we seem to be unaware, for the most part, that the world has changed drastically over the past two decades. As much as we'd like to go back to the good old days when there were national Christian standards in this nation. How many know to arouse, arouse ourselves to reality is to realize we're not living in those days any longer. There was a time when the majority of Americans were Christians and those who had a healthy respect for God and the Bible. 
There was a time you had to be a Christian to even hold an office. How I many know oh, those days are long gone? In many ways, America reflects what happened in Europe. Over a hundred years ago, Christianity was predominant in Europe. But now, Europe is a post-Christian secular society. In London, there are now more mosques than there are churches. And there are many more Muslims who go to prayer on Friday than Christians who go to church on Sunday. And Europe is a nation where just over a hundred years ago, you had the Welsh revival. And John Wesley was there and George Whitfield was there. They had great revivals under Evan Roberts, the Welsh revival. Revival swept the nation. And in Britain, the churches were packed. Now, I just got through speaking to Neil and Joan Sayers just a couple weeks ago. Many of you know Neil and Joan Sayers. They've been friends of ours and in this church for many, many years. Neil and Joan Sayers, I know God is the reason why we're here in North Houston. But I tell you what, if they weren't a major part of it, I'd probably still be in Brazosport, <coughs> pastoring that church. Because I didn't have to leave that church. Church was going great. Having, everything was great. But it's because God said you need to go. But it was, it was Joan Sayers who looked across the table at me when we hadn't told a soul what we were doing. Because Joyce told me we're not telling anybody. <laughs> Amen. And she was right in doing that. And it was Joan Sayers who looked across the table and says, what's God telling you? I kind of covered it because God already spoke to me what was going to happen. But we hadn't told anybody because we would make sure it was God. But Neil and Joan Sayers, they would, they would pray in the sanctuary down at Brazosport, Brazosport Christian Center. They would pray in the sanctuary. One day they were praying. I've told you this before, but just to re remind you, they were praying in the sanctuary because they were thinking of basing their ministry in our church down there in Clute, Brassport Christian Center. And as they walked around and they prayed, said, Lord, we want to we wanna know your will. If we should partner here at this church and be, establish our ministry, and God spoke to them very clearly and said, no, you're not going to do that because they're not going to be here. They're not going to be here. That's what she said to, across the table sitting at Luby's. She looked across from me and she said, you're leaving, aren't you? I had never, not to, we hadn't told a soul, it was only Joyce and I. At that moment, I knew that God was saying, it's time for you to go. So that's Neil and Joan Sayers. A major part of the reason why Joyce and I are here today. So I talked to them. Because of their whole visa situation, they had to go back to Europe. They had to go back there to, in, in Britain. But in talking to them the other day, they said, Scott, would you, would you pray for us? They said their church, the area where their church is, 0.01% even attend church. I think probably in this, in where we are here, it's low. It's maybe 11% or something more. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry, but I, th I think it's like that, it's like 11% or somewhere in there. There's this 0.01% that people attend church. Would you pray for us? Come on, how many believe out of that God can bring right for revival? Come on. I'll tell you when the Welsh revival happened, London, when... Uh, I'm thinking uh, founder of the founder of uh, Salvation Army Booth. When William Booth, before the revival happened there, you talk about a cesspool. London was a cesspool. And Booth would walk the streets and pray. He would take his son, his young son, and he would stand in the front of one of these brothels and one of these, these places that were just absolutely, absolutely 
unbelievable. And he, he'd tell his son, these are our people. He loved the people. A revival happened. How many believe God can do it again? Huh? So when you think of Neil and Joan Sayers, pray for their church. Because they're really fighting a battle there. That's, that's where it's become. It's happened in Europe. And unless we wake up, it'll happen here. And honestly, it's already begun. And if you don't know that, my friend, then you sure don't understand the times that we are in. It's already begun. How many know today we're heading down a road we don't want to go? Amen. What's the message? Jesus spoke to the church in Sardis. He said, wake up. He said, strengthen what remains. There's not much, but strengthen what you have. Strengthen what remains and is about to die. You better strengthen what remains because what you got is about to die. Strengthen what you have. For I have not found your deeds complete in the sight of my God. Remember, therefore, what you have received and heard. Obey it and repent. Come on, how many of that's a word of the Lord today for the people of God? Jesus is saying we must remember what made our nation a great country. And we need to repent and we need to return to those biblical standards. President Woodrow Wilson said, I quote, a nation which does not remember what it was yesterday does not know what it is today, end of quote. We right here in the church, we need to wake up to what's happening right now, right here and now in America. Do you believe that today? We need to wake up and lift up our prayers for America. We need to be storming heaven. We need to be appealing to heaven with our petitions for our nation. Come on, from the nation, from the beginning of our nation, how many know that God has been intervening on our behalf? Amen. Come on. Again, it's so, it's so, it's sad, it's, it's maddening to think what some of these ones are teaching in school, not teaching the, 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 the truth. Did you, did you see, first of all, I think it's Oklahoma, where they're requiring, is that right? It's in Oklahoma, where they are uh, posting the Ten Commandments in every classroom. Come on. Louisiana? And then something else, and I, I can't, I, can't, I just heard it this week. I can't remember uh, what, it, what it is. Uh, man, I can't remember, but I know it's going to cause the left to pucker big time and all the crazies out there that want to change everything about this great nation. Come on, friends. But I tell you what, if it wasn't for God intervening for us in this nation, we wouldn't be sitting right here. We'd probably be speaking German. You better believe it. Know your history. That's a maddening thing. They're not teaching history to these young people. Probably a lot that I've said today, they've never heard before. They're not teaching the history of this nation. You read history, you find out the miraculous stories of God's protection during the Revolutionary War. With our troops at Valley Forge. And how many know that he was with our men when they hit the beach there at, at Normandy, which we were just remembering just a few weeks ago. But I tell you, some have wondered, and I'm one of them, how long we can depend on God's protection. After 9-11, boy, we just came together, didn't we? I couldn't get anybody to come to prayer during that time, you know the whole story of what happened on 9-11?
And when I was having prayer in the morning, nobody came. I was by myself on 9-11 praying. Praying for revival. Praying for the move of God. These very words came out of my mouth. What's it going to take? What's it going to take, God, for people to want revival? And in a matter of a few minutes, 9-11 unfolded. Boy, that night we had a lot of people in the house to pray. How many were in churches that they were pretty full that night, huh? Yeah, sure. But after 9-11, after the just devastation of Hurricane Katrina, just to mention one, Billy Graham's daughter, Anne Grand Lotz, she said this, and I quote, for years we've been telling God to get out of our schools, to get out of our government, and to get out of our lives. I believe he has calmly backed out. How can we expect God to give us his blessing and his protection if we demand he leave us alone? End of quote. God's word is clear about his promise to answer prayer when a nation needs healing. Come on. He says, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves seek his face, pray, and turn from their sin, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. Come on, folks. Second Chronicles seven fourteen. The burden, listen, the burden of our nation does not rest in the White House. It doesn't rest in the State House. It doesn't rest in the courthouse. It rests on the redeemed people of God in God's house. Here in God's house. It rests on you and on me. We need to cry out to the Lord and pray on behalf of our nation and more than ever for its leadership. It's time we get on our knees and repent. I'm not hearing any main mans here. I said we need to get on our knees and repent. Not a lay me down to sleep prayer. Not a God is good, God is great. Thank him for the food we ate kind of prayer. But prayer that lines up with the will of God. Prayer that reaches the throne of God. And prayer that moves the hand of God. Hallelujah. And listen, some things are not done just by praying. But it's imperative that fasting be a part of our lives. Whether it be one meal, one day, one week, or one month. You see, Jesus told his disciples when they fumbled the opportunity of casting out a demonic spirit that was destroying a young boy's life. They're in Matthew 17. He told them once they got alone in verse 21. They said, well, why couldn't we do that? Why was it that we couldn't cast him out? Jesus said, boys, let me tell you something. This kind will not come out but by prayer and fasting. He said, these demons won't leave unless you've prayed and gone without food or fasted. I believe the revival that's coming. Come on, how many believe today there's going to be a move of God in these last days? Come on. The revival that's coming. You hear me today. It's going to expose us to things in the demonic that we've never dealt with before. And if you and I are not willing to die to our flesh through the discipline of fasting, we too will be impotent as the disciples in seeing people set free. Come on, how many want to see people set free, delivered in the mighty name of Jesus? Do it again, God. Do it again, Lord. But you know, few people take time to read the verses after verse 14 in Second Chronicles. We read that verse and we, yes, say amen to it. And yes, if you got to do. Verse 19 is not quite as pleasant because it predicts what happens to a nation. 
that doesn't repent and seek God. Second Chronicles seven nineteen. But if you turn away and forsake the decrees and commands I have given you, then I will uproot Israel from my land, which I have given them. I will make it a byword and an object of ridicule among all people. How many know that's the word of the Lord? It's not just a gesture. It's a promise. It's a warning. You know, most Christians, most Christians don't seem to have an understanding about the culture in which we are living. I believe most don't. I believe too many go to church simply to feel good about themselves. Wanting to escape all the corruption and the influence of this nation, the world. Thinking if we just go to church on Sunday, everything will be okay. How many believe that's the wrong approach? Huh? Jesus never told us to retreat. He told us to charge into the world and to carry the good news of the gospel. Jesus said, I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and innocent as doves. What's Jesus saying? He's telling us to wise up. Wise up. To look and see what's happening in our culture without conforming to the culture. Daniel Webster said this, and I quote, God grants liberty only to those who love it and are always ready to guard and defend it. End of quote. If we're going to guard and defend our liberty, we must understand those forces that are threatening it today. How many believe we must wake up and go to God's throne with our prayers? Huh? We got to wise up and be willing to stand up for righteousness and truth in a culture that is becoming more wicked day by day. The apostle Paul wrote in Philippians 2, 15 and 16, become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like stars in the universe as you hold out the word of life. Amen. Our nation, and you know this, Boy, I tell you, sometimes I think I can't be any more shocked. <laughs> it keeps happening. I see things and I see what's going on. And I'm shocked all over again. Come on. How many are, how many are like that in yourself? You see that? Man, our nation is struggling like never before in moral darkness. And Christ is calling us to be the light of the world. Our culture is being destroyed and getting more corrupt. And Jesus has called us to be the salt of the earth. So how many would agree with me today? We cannot afford to be silent. We cannot afford to be silent. Sure, when you speak out, oh, you're going to hear it. You're going to have people, oh, separation of church and state. They know what they're talking about. They're going to say, you don't have the right. You don't have the right to speak about public policy and law. Go back to your church. Keep your opinions to yourself and just stay there. How many know that's exactly what the devil wants? Come on. It's exactly what he wants. He wants us to be shackled. He wants us to be shackled right here in the sanctuary. And he wants the light of God to be locked up in this house. But last time I checked, we as the family of faith, 
We are not second class citizens in the nation of America. Come on. Hallelujah. Our voices need to be heard. In fact, the Bible commands it. Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. There in Matthew chapter 5. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Come on, that's you and me. How many redeemed do we have in the house today? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Hallelujah. And God urged his people in Isaiah 51 or 58 1, shout it aloud. Come on, do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their rebellion and to the house of Jacob their sins. Come on, we have a right to shout it out today, to lift up our voices. We must stand up and let our voices be heard and declare to our government the eternal and infallible truths of God's word and how these principles apply to the policies and the laws of our nation. Come on. We need to stand up for biblical beliefs. Come on. It says killing a baby in a mother's womb is not right, it's wrong. Come on. I gotta be careful because I'll really get off on something. When you talk about the Democratic Party, and the other night, I won't get into that. I'm just letting you know that the Democratic Party party's platform is to terminate a baby up to birth and after birth. Well, we'll just leave the baby over here and we'll go over here and talk to the doctor and uh, see what he wants to do. And if the mother and the doctor decide, then we'll come over. What are you going to put a pillow on the baby's face and smother it? Come on, church. We need to speak out against the things that are against God's word. Redefining marriage, which includes to them same-sex marriage. It's wrong, it's ungodly, it's foul, and it's an abomination in God's eyes. Amen. Come on, church. We need to remind many of those black robe tyrants masquerading as judges in America that we were founded in God because taking away our religious heritage is wrong and it is unjust. Right. Come on, you ought to be shouting me down right now because I'm, I'm giving you some truth. Yes. We got to stand up to our government and say enough is enough. Amen. Enough is enough. America, wake up. I wish I had the ear of every person in this nation. I'd say, America, wake up. And I got you, though. Jesus Christ, church of Jesus Christ, wake up. And rediscover the simple truth that as long as our declaration is in God we trust, then we will remain a great nation. The Liberty Bell was not meant to be hidden under the floorboard of a church. A bell is meant to be rung for all to hear. We are called to proclaim liberty throughout the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. How many believe what I'm saying today is truth? Amen. Jesus said in his first sermon, following his temptation in the wilderness, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me. To preach good news to the poor. He's anointed me. He sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners. And recovery of sight for the blind. To release the oppressed. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Amen. Amen. Come on people of God. 
Stand to your feet right now and let's lift up our voices and let's declare our allegiance to the covenants of God's holy word. Come on. Pledging our hearts, renewing our commitment to the infallible truths that are yes and amen. Come on. Can we do that right now? Can we lift up our voices? Can we declare our allegiance to the covenant of God's word? Lord, we stand today in covenant with you. Oh, God, forgive us today. Forgive us for our sin. Forgive us, God, for our lack of prayer. Forgive us, oh, God, for our lack of allegiance to the Word of God and to the things of God. Oh, mighty God, we look to you today. Mighty God, come on, we pledge ourselves today. Come on, we pledge ourselves today to the truths that are found in God's Word. I pledge myself today, Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God. Oh, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Today, Lord God, we pledge ourselves to stand in truth. Come on, ask God to help you to stand, to stand for what is right, for, to stand for what is holy, to stand for what is righteous. Oh, God, hallelujah. Don't just stand by, stand up. Don't just stand by and say, well, that's just what the world believes. No, it's wrong. Will you be ridiculed? Sure you will. Will you be upset? Sure you will. Will you be made fun of? Yes. There are people who have died for that stance. But how many believe we got to stand for the word of God? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. On how, to, how to do this. But, uh, maybe the, the thing that you were thinking about was about the governor that was uh, that he's signing a bill calling for 31 days That's right. That's, of I was prayer and fasting. Can I read this? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> sure I can. <laughs> That's Mama Bear. You better believe okay. it. Okay. Come, come here and help me with this word. Okay. Hold that mic close, honey. Okay. What's this word right there? Reminiscent. Oh, reminiscent. Sorry. Okay, so reminiscent of proclamations to pray and fast by founders and past presidents during times of national concern, Governor Bill Lee has signed a resolution calling for 31 days of prayer and fasting in Tennessee beginning July 1st, 2024. Tennessee... House Joint Resolution 803 asks the state citizens to seek God's hand on mercy and healing on Tennessee. Mm. The resolution passed overwhelmingly in state Senate 27 to 1 and in the House 82 to 6. The resolution, in the resolution, Tennessee legislators recognized that God as creator has the authority to judge and bless the states and the nation. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Yes. The state's legislators then called on the people of Tennessee to humbly ask for forgiveness and to ask that the Lord Jesus Christ heal our land and remove the violence, human trafficking, addiction, corruption, they also ask people to call upon the Holy Spirit to fill the halls of government, classrooms, um, businesses, churches, yes. homes, and with peace and love and joy. Thank you, Jesus. A letter accompanying the resolution signed by State Senator Mark P Potty further invites citizens to acknowledge that we as the church have failed to stand on the principles of God. There you go. Ask for, ask for his forgiveness and mercy and commit to stand firmly on those principles going forward. Excuse me. My mouth is getting shut. <laughs> you know Hallelujah. Um, Come on, isn't that good? Isn't it good? Uh, yeah. Come on. In res okay, where did I yeah, right there, in okay. response. Thank you. In response to Tennessee's prayer and fasting call, California Pastor Jack Hibbs, I don't know if you know who he is, of Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills, called upon every pastor, 
every Christian church in the nation to join with Tennessee and intercede for America and all the states. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hibbs, uh, you re will recall. Okay, wait. That's right. Okay. Right yeah. there. Okay. Hibbs, you will recall, is the, the nasty hate pastor who recently gave to the U.S. House of Invocation an invocation upon the invitation of Speaker Mike Johnson. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just kind of skipping through here. Um, okay, toward the end, there was a guy who, I guess on Instagram or wherever this is, said, thank you, Governor Bill Lee. I pray that the rest of the 49 states will do as well. Tennessee governor signs bill calling 30 days of prayer and fasting in July. Hallelujah. Come on. What you were saying. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's, that's yes. exactly right. That's exactly, I was, I was trying to think of what else it was, and that's it. Come on, how many believe we ought to join with them? That's right. That's Come on, right. starting tomorrow. You might fast a meal, whatever, but you're doing it because of, of what, that is a bold step. Calling a whole state, calling the whole state to pray and fast for the whole month. Come on, that's bold. Hallelujah. That's exactly, does that confirm what I've said right. to you today? Does that confirm it? That we need to stand, this man is standing up. Again, the guy, the one in Louisiana, he's standing up. He's taking a stand. You don't think they're going to get blowback? There's going to be lawsuits. But it's time, like he said, like they're saying, enough is enough. It's time we let our voice be heard. Hallelujah. 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 And God will see that. Come on, let's just right now begin by just, let's pray. Let's ask God, Lord, forgive us. Come on, let's ask God to forgive us in this nation. The things that we've done, oh God, as a nation. Lord, forgive us for our, Lord, our lack of prayer, Lord. For our, for our Lord, not seeking you, not seeking your face. God, for not turning from those things that are, our Lord, are an offense to you. God, we just pray today. We pray for our son. Like Nehemiah, he said, I and my fathers have sinned. He joined with them. You say, well, I don't have any sin today. Oh, you do? Because we're a part of this nation. Come on, let's say of God. Lord, we as a nation have sinned. We as a nation have turned our back on you. We have, we have let millions and millions of precious children be killed in the womb. Almighty oh, God, we've stood by. And Lord, let these laws be passed that can take a young child and mutilate their bodies. Lord God, we've stood by where they've tried to redefine gender. When Lord, you said there are two, there are male and female. God, anything outside of that is an abomination to God. We stand up. Come on. Come on, folks. Help me pray. Pray out loud. Pray out loud and call on God right now. Call on God. Call upon the Lord. Almighty God, forgive us for our sin. Forgive us, oh God, that we've shut you out of our schools. We've shut you out of government. We've shut you out of business. We've shut you out of media. We've shut you out of entertainment. But God, today we're saying, oh God, forgive us. Oh God. Lord, I know, Lord. God, that you may have backed off, but God, we're saying, Lord, we don't believe that. We want you in, God, every part of our lives. We want you in the schools. We want you in the government. Oh, mighty God, we cry out to you. Come on, friends, you need to cry out like, like you're a dying man, like you're a dying woman, unless something happens. Come on. We need to cry out to God. Cry out to God. Oh, God, one more time in this nation. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The song, Heal America. Come on. We got to pray that God would heal this nation. We need to pray that God, oh, I know it looks bad. 
But come on, God is greater. Come on, I don't care how bad it looks. Our God is greater. He's the God of the heavens. He's the God of the earth. And He's the God of beneath the earth. He is mighty. He is mighty. He is El Shaddai. He is Elohim. He is mighty. Almighty God. Oh, we cry out to you, God. One more time, God. Open the windows of heaven over this nation. Oh, God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, come on, friends. We need to cry out like dying men and dying women. Cry out to God. Oh, God. Save this nation, God. Save this nation, oh God. Yes, God. You are Lord. You are Christ. You are the anointed one. Oh, you are King of glory. You're great I am. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, glory, glory to your name. Oh, mighty God, mighty God. Come on, we need to ask God this morning to have mercy on this nation. Because I tell you, we've spit in his eye for a long time. We need to ask God's mercy. God, your mercy upon us today. God, pour out your mercy. Pour out your mercy, God, on us. Oh, and send revival, God, one more time. Before your son comes out and splits those eastern skies. God, one more time, pour out your presence. Now is the time, now is the time. I, the Lord, saith unto thee, now is the time for you to look up, for you to cry out, for you to bend your knee and bend your face toward the earth. For I, the Lord, will do great and mighty things, but I'm waiting for my people. My call upon you today is to cry out with all of your heart, to bow before me in humility, and I, the Lord, will hear from heaven, and I will do a work in you that unless you'd heard it, you won't believe it. You won't believe the work that I'm able to do, that I'm able in one day to turn it all around. For I am the Lord thy God, and there's nothing too hard for me. Even this day, saith the Lord, now is the time. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody respond to the Lord today. Come on, somebody respond to the Lord. Somebody respond to the Lord. Just tell him, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, we hear you. Yes, Lord, we hear you. Oh, God. Now is the time. Now is the day. Now is the hour. Oh, yes, Lord. We hear you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Lord God Almighty. Lord God of the heavens. Oh, God, we hear you. Lord God, show us, God. Show us, oh, Lord. Oh, mighty God, we look to you. We look to you. We cry out to you. We know that 
your author and perfecter of our faith. Shall we look to you, O God? Oh, mighty God. Oh, mighty God. God Almighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Le kababashe lo babriande kaya toho yelele mashuka da 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 basai. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Oh, we look to you today, God. Oh, we hear you, Lord. We hear your voice. We hear what you're saying to us, Lord. Oh, we will not turn our backs on you, God. We will not stand by, but we will stand up and declare the goodness of God. We declare the word of the Lord. Oh, mighty God. Hallelujah. Oh, mighty God, mighty God. Oh, hear our humble cry today. Hear our humble cry, oh God. Oh, as we in humility, God, cry out to you. Save us, God. Save us, God. Oh, in the mighty name of your Son. Oh, Father in heaven. Save us, mighty God. Oh, come on, just cry out to God. He hears you. God's listening. He's telling you it's now, it's now, it's now. It's time right now. Oh, don't hesitate. Don't put it off. Oh, but now's the day to seek the Lord with all your heart. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. The Lord is good, and His mercy endures forever. The Lord is good, come on, and His mercy endures forever, everybody, come on. The Lord is good, and His mercy endures forever. The Lord is good, and His mercy endures forever. The Lord is good, hallelujah, and his mercy endures forever in Jesus' holy name. Oh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. I say yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Come on, will you say yes to him today? Come on, is he dealing with you today? Just say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. God is, God is calling you to a higher place. Come on, friend. God's calling us all to a higher place. Hallelujah. Oh, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. He's calling you. He's calling all of us to a higher place. In the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God hear you today. Save our nation. 
Oh, it's not lost. God's not given up on it. Save our nation. Oh, save our nation, Lord. Nation. Oh, hallelujah. Save our nation. Save our nation, God. Save our nation. Save our nation. A song that was sung at the revival in Brownsville many a night. Joyce and I were there. They would begin to sing this song. And I tell you, the power of God would begin to just move in that place. It already been moving. But when they sang that song, something began to happen when people in true repentance said, God, have mercy. Have mercy on me. Look, every one of us in this room, every one of you watching, we all need mercy. Come on. We need the mercy of the Lord. And so we cry out to God, and this is such a powerful word. As you sing it, make it your prayer this morning. Make it your prayer before the Lord. Hallelujah. Melissa, it's called Lord Have Mercy. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, come on, let the Holy Spirit just make it real to you right now. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Sing Thank you, peace Jesus.
Come on, tell the Lord, I'm putting my hope in you today, God. I'm putting my hope in you. Come on. Hallelujah. And come on today, if you'd like to have just a fresh, fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit for what we believe today, come on, lift up both those hands to the Lord and say, God, fill me afresh and anew today with your Holy Spirit. Oh, God, fill me to overflowing today. Fill me with the fullness of your Holy Spirit today. Oh, mighty God, mighty God, I hunger and I thirst for you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Fill me, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, we know it's your desire to fill us today with a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Come on, just begin to thank him out loud. Thank you, Jesus, for the infilling of your spirit. Thank you for the fullness of your spirit. Oh, come on, let it just flow through you like rivers of living water today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Holy God, holy God, holy God, holy God, holy God. God just showed me, and I, I didn't want to come up here. I thought it was for me, but he said, no, you step out that boldness. And what God said that when Saul saw that he was doing what was good, but he wasn't. But God removed the scales and so we and made him into Paul. And so that's what we need to pray that the, for the, our country, for our nation, that the scales will be falling off so they will see, they will become a Paul. Right. Come on, that's a good word. Let's pray that right now. God, remove the scales from our eyes so we can see. God, where we've been blinded, where we've been blinded, God, and we haven't seen with the right eyes. We haven't seen this nation with your eyes. God, we've gone along like everything's fine when it's not fine. It's not fine. God needs to move. God wants us to see with his eyes. Oh, mighty God, remove those scales from our eyes, God, to see. Oh, Lord, that we'll see what's right. We'll see what's true. We'll see what's holy. We'll see what's just. We'll see what's righteous. Oh, let us see, God, with your eyes. Oh, Lord, move our hearts today with what moves your heart. Oh, mighty God. Oh, mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Show me, Lord, show me. Show me your heart. Show me your way. Show me your glory. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 
Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, how many are glad today for the presence of God? How many are glad today for the word of the Lord? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, right now we join together and we pray for these governors. God, I know, Lord Jesus, oh, I know that hell is stirred today. I know, God, that right now the demonic powers in hell are organizing to somehow come against these incredibly brave men. They're going to set up the commandments of God in these, that these young people, that these children will know that there is a God in Israel and that they will know that God has commandments that we are to live by. And if we violate those commandments, we sin before God. Thank you, Lord, for that governor there in Louisiana. Thank you, God, for this governor in Tennessee that is called not a church, not just a city. He's all called the whole state to fast, Lord, in this fast and pray in this next month. And God, we pray that these men, come on, let's plead the blood of Jesus over these men and their families and their children and their marriages. Father, we plead the blood of Jesus over these men. We pray a hedge of God's protection around them because we know the enemy's going to attack them from every side. But God, I pray this bold move that they have done. Oh God, it'll start something in this nation. I pray, God, that revival will begin in Tennessee and it'll sweep across 49 other states, oh God, and we'll begin to see people coming and get saved and healed and delivered, oh God, by the power of your Holy Ghost. Demonstrate your glory, God, in a mighty and a supernatural way. God, we stand with these brave men and God, we thank you, Lord, today and I pray, God, that you will honor them that you will bless them, God, for their efforts. Oh, Lord, may supernatural, mighty miracles break out in classrooms when those children begin to read the Ten Commandments. Oh, Lord, when young people begin to read the Ten Commandments, let it get a hold of their hearts. God, every bit of junk that they've looked on TikTok or Instagram or these other foul places, oh, God, as they read the Ten Commandments, may something transform in their lives by the power power of Almighty God. Oh, Lord, and start revival in the children. Start revival in the youth. We declare in the mighty name of Jesus. And God, we will join with them. God, we will join with them. Lord, starting tomorrow, God, whether it's fasting just a meal or fasting a day, God, we will join with the, the, the state of Tennessee and God, the people of Tennessee, and we will fast and we will pray with them for the outpouring of God's Spirit. Come on, everybody believes that. Shout amen to the Lord. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. And Lord, we expect mighty things Amen. to happen. Oh, come on. Amen. We expect mighty things to happen. Oh, hallelujah. Whew. Boy, I tell you what, it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I tell you, I tell you, I tell you. I thank you, Jesus. I believe. Oh, let's just pray for it. And I think in joining them, I'll, something is going to happen. Haven't we been praying for God to raise up men of God and women of God? Come on. Do you realize how bold this stand is that they're taking? That's right. They're going to get sued from every direction. Oh, but let's say God... As your eyes run to and fro throughout the whole earth, let your eyes set upon Louisiana. Let your eyes rest on Tennessee and show yourself strong and mighty on behalf of the people of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And we will join with him. Whether again it's a meal, if it's sugar, or you're able to, you don't have any type of ailment in your body, 
to where you can fast a day or two or a week or whatever. We're going to join with them. We're going to stand with them. And we're going to see God do a mighty work in the name of Jesus. Come on, this may be a more... And it may not be the fireworks they shoot up in the sky going off on this Thursday, July 4th. It may be the power of God. It may be the Lord splitting the skies open and pouring out his glory on this nation and bringing down all the corruption, all the sin, all the things that have hindered the move of God. It might open the windows of heaven and God begin to pour out his spirit in a mighty and a supernatural way from the north to the south, from the east to the west seeing God do a great work. This may be the greatest 4th of July we've ever seen. Hallelujah. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yep, they woke up and stood up and not woke like the other woke. Right. That's right. Woo! Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Well, amen. Put your hands out toward me today. Yes. All right. Father, we just, yes. we just lift up. Right? Yes. It's on. Okay. Um, Father, we just lift up yes. Governor Abbott to yes, you, Lord. God. Every time I see him on TV, God, we just the load that this man carries, God, yes, God. We, can, we don't even know, realize what that is, Father. But God, you do. Yes, and so, Lord, we, right now, we just cover him yes, by the Lord. blood of Jesus, Lord. Yes, God. God, we know that maybe sometimes he doesn't do it all right and he gets it wrong. Maybe, maybe not. But God, yes. I believe, God, that you're telling him, God, that yes. you can be that he can be your mouthpiece, Father. Lord, I, I pray even for the for the things that he, he's gone through with the um, immigration and the borders, God. Yes, Strengthen him, Lord. Give him strength daily, God. Lord, lift him up. God, I want to see that here, Father, that yes, he would Lord. sign a bill here, Lord, yes, Lord. that we yes. would have a day of prayer, a month yes. of prayer and yes. fasting yes. here, Lord, yes. in Texas, God. God, I know he hears you. I know he believes, Father. So I pray for him, his family, God, that you would strengthen him, strengthen his mind, heart, and soul, body. God, just give him an extra strength, Lord, that he, this man needs, God, for the load that he carries, Lord. We pray, Father, for the blood of your son, Jesus, Lord, to cover him. God, just to cover him. And we thank you. We thank you for this man, Lord, that you've put in this place for yes, this Lord. time, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And everybody said. Amen. Now I know that uh, that Governor Abbott wasn't born. He was an accident. An accident where he was shot and it crippled him. I just thought Peter and John at the gate beautiful. Where he said to the man that was lame from his mother's womb. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. Amen. Come on. They said, they said about that, the, the, the secular people of that day said, what do we say about this? These are the words. For this is a notable miracle. I'm going to believe God could raise Abbott up out of that wheelchair and heal him, that he would rise up and walk. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we just pray. We just pray, God, that the Spirit of God would be upon that man, Lord. And Lord, we know what happened when that man was healed. They were told, if this is of God, you can't stop it. So you might as well not try. God, we just pray, Lord, that you would bring about a miracle in Governor Abbott's body that would say to this nation and the world, there is still a God in Israel who is able to heal, to heal the lame, the blind, the deaf, the mute, and is able to cast out every demon 
out of hell, every spirit of hell in the name of his son Jesus. Come on, hallelujah. How many want to see some notable miracles in this day? Hallelujah. I've never in my life thought about that. Never in my life thought about God touching Abbott and getting up out of that wheelchair. But I believe God is going to show himself strong and mighty in our days. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did I bless you yet? Oh, hallelujah. Okay. <laughs> well, here it comes. Put your hand out. Oh, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Everybody shouted, Amen. 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 Well, we can go out today and say to one person, Man, it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. God bless you. God bless those who join us today. Amen and amen.